what is mm -hmm. the femme fatale hypothesis? Because I use that as, <laughs> as, because it was a really cute image. I thought, how cute is that? So I use that as your image. So what is that? Yeah. So, um, so that's from my previous life as a biology researcher. <laughs> that is a, the name of a hypothesis that I um, coined, I guess, in one of my scientific papers when I was researching praying mantises and their pheromone production. So females produce sex pheromones to attract males to them and then they find each other and they and they physically mate um, but what I was finding is that these really skinny kind of females with with very few eggs so really not the female that you would want as a male because there's no eggs to fertilize if that makes mm -hmm. sense you want a big fat female with lots of eggs that you can fertilize and these skinny females I found were, were attracting all of these males it was counterintuitive, right? You would expect mm. that the big fat females would have more energy, would have more resources, and mm. that the males would be more attracted to them. And I was finding, yes, they were, but also the really skinny ones. So I had this funny graph where the really skinny and the really fat females, but not the ones in the middle, were attracting ah. the males. And so I, um, I hypothesized that it, it may actually be a strategy to because as most people know as i'm sure you're aware and most of the world is aware that female praying mantises well some of them um consume their their male partners during before after depending on the being species, sensible the i know i'm always event. hungry after <laughs> mm. um and so my theory was that maybe it's a, actually a strategy um to lure these males in as a meal rather than as a mate so ah. then they get the energy from the male meal, they can produce more eggs and get a second and get a second male in to fertilize them. So that's where the femme fatale <laughs> hypothesis or, or whatever is um that's where that term came from. These these skinny females using it as a strategy. I love that. That is one of my favourites, and it might actually end up being the promo for this show because I love it. <laughs> Dr. Kate, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for being on the show and uh, no thank problem. you for bringing your cup up and your one piece of advice for us all because I do think that chronic health is one of those things that um, – we're seeing more people now focused upon their health. Now that the COVID has given us all some much needed breathing space, we've all realized, yes. oh, flog, I've got to look after my body. You know, I've got another, you know, what, 80 years in it. Let's, uh, let's make sure that it's going to last because otherwise you're going to be dealing with chronic health conditions uh, for what is the best part of your life, the part where you actually know what you're doing, you know, who you Absolutely. are. You're not scared yeah. anymore. Um, yeah. So I think this is Definitely. really, really important. And I would love to talk to you more about inflammation and gut health. So how about if we do it again in like a couple of months? Yeah, I'd love to. Yay! <laughs> right, well, thank you so much for being to see with you. us and to everybody that joined the show. Much appreciated. Next week, 10.30, we've got, oh, we've got Zorica, who's a photographer coming on. She does these most amazing uh, photographs, particularly of people. It's, it's really interesting, her use of light and shade and colour. And she's going to be with us next week. So feel free to join us awesome. and ask any questions that you want to ask next week, 10.30, Tuesday. See you then. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.